you can take a polygraph in the morning. It's set up for in the hopefully early. Oh, all my heart. A lot of buzz surrounding Haley's mother's boyfriend, Sean Adkins. He was the last person to see Haley alive. I would never do nothing to that little girl. Sean told me that he actually got home at about three o'clock, and Haley left the house at about three fifteen. He had been at his mother's house all day Monday. Red flags being raised on Sean. My main focus is this Haley. Somebody took her. She's mine and Clint's daughter. God gave her to us, and we want her back. I'm getting worried that maybe my baby didn't leave on her own for this long amount of time. I just want her to come home safe. We are taking your calls. I want to unleash the lawyers. Joining us tonight, felony prosecutor, death penalty qualified, Eleanor Odom. Defense attorney, Renee Rockwell. Peter Odom, defense attorney, Atlanta. Weigh in, Eleanor. Well, you know, Nancy, I'm very concerned about these polygraphs since everyone failed. And Woody makes a good point. Perhaps the mom was nervous after learning that her boyfriend failed. But these can come into evidence in court if they are stipulated to, and that's important to know. Of course, in this case, Renee Rockwell, the stipulation she's talking about is between the defense and the prosecution. We don't even have a, a party at where, trial yet. So they're where, not, these aren't coming into evidence. Nancy, where are the lawyers? My client's not taking a polygraph period until i test them first to see how they're, they're going to do and I, and shame on them for telling the mother of the child that her live-in boyfriend failed imagine what was going through her head Adam. nancy you made the point yourself that everyone that's hooked up to a polygraph is going to be in a highly emotional state they're involved in some kind of a criminal investigation that's why we should not put stock in polygraphs they are just not reliable they measure emotion they measure skin response and heart rate they do not measure whether someone is actually telling okay the Woody truth. trip Woody you know that is all BS okay now I get the part about emotion but polygraphs are highly reliable if they are administered properly but just telling somebody, hey, basically your husband flunked and then strapping you up and it's, you're talking about your child who's gone missing? I, 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 you know, I'm just a lay person when it comes to polygraphs, but it seems to me that that is not correct procedure. As an examiner, I'm outraged that in fact she would be told that. And Nancy, polygraphs at this point are 92 up to 97 percent accurate. The computerization of polygraphs have made them very accurate. But let's all keep in mind, it's a tool. It's an investigative tool. No more, exactly. no less. But it's a tool, and it has solved tremendous amounts of crime. But it's a tool. I hear you 97% accurate if administered properly. I want to go back to Billy Dunn. This is the 13-year-old cheerleader's mom. And keep your eyes peeled on these photos we're showing you. You got the FBI in on this case, the Texas Rangers, the local police. We're all in an effort to find Haley. She's a 13-year-old little girl. Billy Dunn, have you spoken to your boyfriend since he moved out? No. When you told him you wanted him out, what, if anything, did he say about Haley? Told, looked at me, told me, you know, you know me better than anybody. You know I love you. You know I love Haley and David. You know I couldn't do this. At the same time, I told him, yes, I know that, Sean, but I also know you failed that test. Why did you fail that test? We are taking your calls along with Billy Dunn is her, the, the little girl's father, Clint Dunn. Jennifer in Texas. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Nancy. Hi, dear. What's your question? Yes, it's about the Amber Alert. What actually oh, yes. constitutes being able to file an Amber Alert other than a child is missing and has been missing for days? You know, Jennifer in Texas, I am just sick, sick, sick. They still haven't issued an Amber Alert in this case. Mark Class, you're the expert. Why? Why did they not mm. issue an Amber Alert in this case? There's the interstate right there. First of all, this is not about the Amber Alert. This is about the incompetence of a police chief who categorized the girl as a runaway for the first four days. An Amber Alert also is a tool, and it's a tool that should be activated as soon as... The disappearance of a child 
has been has been has, has been verified and certain other information has been added. I do not believe it should be locked in stone as it seems to be in most jurisdictions, but I do know that in Texas they have one of the best systems around. We work with the Texas Amber Alert system with our company Beyond Missing, but this is really about this chief and him trying to de defer responsibility to the Department of Public Safety. And I firmly believe that at this point an Amber Alert really probably won't help this case because the world knows about it anyway well you know what you're right at this point but at in those point. first critical hours you know I want to go to Alexis Wade you and I have studied very carefully about the requirements for the Amber Alert in this jurisdiction what are they Alexis and Nancy in Texas the Amber Alert criteria is first that the child must be 17 years of age or younger the law enforcement agency must believe that the child is in immediate danger of serious bodily harm or of death and um, also the law enforcement agency must believe that the child has been abducted. And isn't it true, Alexis, that you were told there was no Amber Alert in this case because nobody saw her get kidnapped? That's understanding, Nancy, yes. Mark Class, you don't normally kidnap out in the public square. Most kidnaps, I would imagine, you don't have a witness to it. And you know, Nancy, that's why the vast majority of the vast majority of high pro, uh, the vast majority of high risk kidnappings, those that are taken by strangers or those that are taken by other types of predators, do not qualify for the Amber Alert. Adam Walsh would not have qualified for the Amber Alert. Polly would not have qualified for the Amber Alert. Jessica Lunsford would not have qualified, nor would Elizabeth Smart have qualified for an Amber Alert. It's a system that has been put in place upside down but and Mark, uh, I, just I think don't it's terrible see how a lawman could say well i'm not gonna put this up for amber alert because nobody saw her get kidnapped I, you, know, how you could say that and keep your badge i don't know there's another case going on right now in in baltimore maryland where they used those same criteria the whole fact that they had absolutely nothing they use that to raise it to a very high alarm state and they've got like 35 or 40 detectives searching for that particular child right now out to bethany marshall psychoanalyst author of deal breakers joining us out of la way in bethany well, in terms of the Amber Alert, if this little girl didn't have a substance abuse problems or problems with her parents or behavioral problems at school, why would anyone ever believe she left voluntarily? And there's no evidence of all of that. I think the best to be gained is by talking to the live-in boyfriend. I would be very curious, how did he meet Billy Dunn? Did he meet her when she was with her daughter? Did he take an excessive interest in the little girl? Did he have a lot of time alone with this little girl? When this little cheerleader went missing, did he show empathy towards the child? Did he try to find her? Did he present theories as to where she had gone? And a big question in my mind, this family where she was supposed to spend the night, did they know she was going no. to spend the night? Bethany, okay. the little girl, Sarah Beth, or the mother of Sarah Beth did not know she was coming to spend the night. I'm going to pose a few of those questions straight to Billy Dunn. I agree with you. Billy, how did you meet the boyfriend? We met on MySpace. He contacted me requesting to be my friend. You never met him um, before that? We talked, right, we talked for about a month through there and then met in person. When you met him, did you have your daughter with you? No, ma'am. And what was his relationship with her? Um, in the beginning, she didn't like him. In the beginning, Clinton and I had just separated. She, she said she felt like he was the reason I wouldn't take her daddy back. Um, it took some time, but she got over it, and her and Sean were able to joke around with each other. She was able to go and ask Sean for 10 bucks instead of tell me to ask him. Things have gotten much better. I still wish, and I'll probably say this forever, I still wish that the mother had called over at the friend's house.